Morning and welcome back to Alan's Allotment. Saturday the 12th of August. Really miserable, we've drizzling, and we've set for this for another week. To those couple of uh, warm days were short lived. It is warm, but it's raining, man. I wanted to get a lot done today, but well, we made a start anyway. I'll spin you around and let you have a look. So I've just been, uh, I was on market place again yesterday, and uh, we found some free wood chip. Very unusual. I've never ever been lucky enough to find someone relatively local. It was about 15 miles away, um, giving some free wood chip away. So there we go. Little trail has paid for itself already. Little tippy trailer. And uh, he's been giving lots of it away to people. And he says he's got a couple of friends that want some, and then whatever's left. He says he'll give me a call, and if I want some more, I can take whatever's left. So, happy days. That was eventful. After I uh, dropped off the wood chip, um, I contacted another guy on Facebook about some wood. And he got back to me, just after I got the trailer a bit. And... I've just been to collect that as well, so it's it's ten, ten just after just after ten thirty now in the morning. But this morning I've been and got the wood chip, and I've now also been, ironically, in a similar place to where I was for the other stuff, uh, is where he turned out to live. About another sixteen mile drive out and, and another sixteen back to pick up some wood, and it was for nothing basically. I've got a hundred lengths of either three or four foot laths and these are going to be used for um, the framing on the top of these new beds. And I'm hoping to make some frames all meshed off with opening doors on both sides so there's no lifting on and off and on and off and it's just there permanently. And every time I plant something, I close the doors and they're protected. On a positive note, I, oh, first of all, I want to say thanks to everybody in the uh, comments section making suggestions about things. And uh, Ali, Alison, over in Canada, and a few other people, uh, Laurie, and one or two other individuals who had said about the gladiol eyes. That's what they are. The minute they said it, I knew. I didn't know what they were, but I just keep having these brainstorms for some unbeknown reason. Anyways, um, the, the beautiful flowers, the beautiful flowers. Go and have me a cup of coffee. I've just had a sandwich. And then we'll give you a little look around. Don't know what I'm going to do, but I really need to get two gates made over by the garage there as well. Because I'm screwing that big panel and lifting it out every time I want to get the trail and it's becoming a chore. So I need to make two swing gates on there uh, that I can lock. Right, so I'm outside in the dry area. Well, dry for now. I've just noticed the winds tore the plastic in here as well. Talk about challenges this year. This plastic is absolutely crap. Anyways, lesson learned. We won't buy from that cellar again. I'm going to spin you round, and I'm going to have a look. I'll let you have a look at the transplants that we've done, the cutting transplants that we've done, and explain a little bit about this process earlier in the week. Right, so these are the cuttings that's been in here about a week now. And these are different species of blueberry. I took some uh, cuttings. I took the green tips. I watched a, a couple of YouTube videos of a guy propagating the green shoots as opposed to the uh, the brown wood with very good results in this method and what they're actually in here so I bought these little trays separately and these plugs are sterile, a sterile medium and they're called if you haven't already heard of them root riot now it's a, it's a sterile medium and it says for plant cubes, for cuttings, 
and seeds ideal for soil and hydroponics, with astonishing results. Faster, more vigorous rooting, made from organic materials, fully biodegradable, perfect, for, uh, perfect air water capacity for healthy roots, new plant transfers easily into soil and other mediums, and it's biodegradable of course. I already had root and powder from last year. Now all the other cuttings that I've took up to now on the blueberries all died. Because I didn't study it enough to know what to do. And I clipped the leaves back as you can see on everything. With the exception of the tip leaves, or if they only had one leaf, or two small ones, but where they were a bit long, I snipped them off. And these come with a little hole already in there. Now if you're putting bigger cuttings in, you probably need to use a drill bit and just screw down and make the hole a little bigger, so you aren't forcing them in there. Then we put the root and compound on, they're already moistened, put them in there, level them up, and then we put our little greenhouse effect on top of there. So apparently the secret with this is, not to water them, but to mist them with a sprayer two or three times a week. But as long as there's condensation in there, they'll be fine. Now here, these are off that peach tree that produced magnificently. These are the um, Red Haven peach. So these are some tips of the Red Haven peach. Likewise, we took the very tips. Now apparently peaches are really, really difficult to root from cuttings. But we'll find out. Again, we clipped the leaves back, leaving them with just a little. This one's starting to feel a little bit, so they'll probably want, they're ready for a spray now because they haven't had a misting. But the blood orange cuttings are all still looking as good as the day I put them in. So I'm going to give these a little misting now and then I'm going to put that back. Right, so I've just given those a little misting now with the uh, spray bottle. Put the tops back on and I'm keeping the, the lids closed completely. Now, Apparently the secret to this is literally just misting them to keep them hydrated but not water them and keeping them in direct sun uh, keeping them in direct light but not in direct sunlight and that's the reason why they're tucked behind this box so the sun can't get at them. And this is all the wood that we got for 30 quid. And bundles of 20. Now, they're basically slate and laths. You couldn't buy that quantity, that size. Well, it'd be well over, well, well, well over 100 pound. Probably nearer two. Right, let's give you a little look around. So these are the sleepers, and these here are some uh, eight foot lengths that I've bought to make some framing on the new bed. Uh, the two new sleeper beds that we've done. So, um, I still need to share with you what this spray is that I'm using, but I can see that these have taken a bit more of a beating. Now then, the solution I have it's for caterpillars, white fly, flea beetle, etc. Yada yada. So, and I do know we had some caterpillars in the polytunnel. I've actually found a couple. Um, when I stripped some old vegetation out, they dropped on the ground. And so I do know we had caterpillars in there doing damage as well. How well that third lot of onions are doing now. Still growing strong, no signs of rust. And doing really well for a third round of onions. So, so far, the these lettuces are still doing okay. Now I've just give these another spray with the spray, and again I'll only share with you what it is, if I find that it works, 
I don't want to tell you what it is. Everybody rush out and buy it, only to find out it doesn't work. But I've also now got some more spray. Now this spray as well, by the way, um, it's systemic. So when it goes into the soil, it kills grubs in the soil as well. You've probably already guessed what it is. But for those that haven't, we'll share with you what it is when we come to it. Now here is the bed we built last week and we planted five rows of vegetables. And you can probably just see up this side they are germinating. But that's a very good propagation with some, um, some of the seed is older seed. So um, we can't complain at that. They're coming along really nice. But what I want to do is get a brassica cage made over it to try and stop any damage. They have also had a spray and into the soil. I've decided against putting these in the beds. I'm going to use this as a mix with sand and gravel, fish blood and bone, and a few other ingredients for potting up plants and whatever's left will go to dress the beds in the polytunnel. So that's just a quick update in here. So what I was telling you, I was uh, my main intention is today, if I can find the wood that I need, is to, this is one big section of fence, which I have to keep unscrewing, lifting it out, and then lifting it back into place, holding it in place while I try to screw it back up. And it's becoming a right old pain in the backside. So I need to convert that into two opening gates. Right, it's not much of a video for you today, I'm afraid. It's been raining, blowing a gale, and I've been dodging in and out of the raindrops, and it's been tough going, basically. It looks like nothing, but it's a really good job, job, because it was getting such a pain unscrewing that fence every time I needed to get in, get something large in this, uh, in this section. Right, so I've brought all of the wood chip in here, put a bit of plastic down, I've still got all this salt to sort through. I brought this wood chip in here and spread a bit round here and under the trailer. And I've now cut this framing down, strengthened it up, put new structured runners in it. And um, it's now a small gate and a fairly wide gate or a double gate. And it works a treat. And we put bars on the bottom down into the sleeper and that's the trailer padlocked to the fence as well and at the top we have padlocks the padlocking type of bars going into this top runner here now you think well I should have only took an hour <laughs> I wish and uh, it's amazing just how much time you can waste doing a, what you think is a simple job. And I had to put all the, uh, I had to strengthen the gates up as well and put extra beams in, put some new 2x2 tunnelised on there. And uh, yeah, it just takes a bit of time. But now I can just come and unlock, take the bars out and throw the gates back now. Much, much easier. And then just close the gates behind me and lock up again. So that's it basically, all I got done. And uh, dodging the rain drops, keeping out the wind, uh, keeping out the rain, uh, the wind, yeah, I can tolerate that. I think I've got that window to fix tomorrow, whatever the weather. I can't be bothered tonight now. I was going to do that as well, and the framings on the bed, but yeah. We're going to have to wait. Right, thanks for popping along. Thanks for all the views, likes, comments, subscriptions, suggestions, donations. I really do appreciate it. If it's your first time here, think about it in that subscribe button. Then select the little bell icon, select all, and 
and that will alert you every time I put up a new video and you can follow me along. If you want to see how the rest of this garden turns out, then uh, hit that subscribe button now, select the notification bell icon, select all, and it'll alert you when I put up new videos. Welcome to all my new subscribers. It's very much appreciated and thanks for taking the time to hit the subscribe button. And of course, thanks to all my long-term subscribers. Wherever you are in the world, please stay safe, be practical and keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you again in the next video.